the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family, let us seek the Father's forgiveness for our God is filled with compassion and gentleness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is, in, is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors of Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, go on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger man collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck the country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here I am dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. He said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, look, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The beautiful story of the prodigal son took place in a modern way in my own family one of my younger brothers had gone away to college and he was having a really good time. And there was no contact with the family. Only thing coming home was credit card bills. Then he decided it was time to reconnect and he came home on a Sunday evening and this gospel was read at mass that Sunday. And he had attended, my father had attended too. So there was a little bit of tension in the house as we waited, how is dad gonna react to my, my brother's return? Because my dad was upset Mom was worried, so she's praying all day. So in the evening, my brother arrives at the, comes in the door, my dad is sitting in his chair in the den, and he looks at up at him and says, well, the prodigal son has returned. And my brother said, yeah, where's my party? And my dad said, you've had your party. You've had your party. He said, yes, and he went over. My dad got up out of the chair and they embraced and hugged. They talked it out and the party did begin. Mom was getting food ready and there was a celebration. 
the celebration that always occurred in our family when someone had been away and returned after an absence. We see in this beautiful story that Jesus told three main characters, the younger erring son, the older judgmental son, and the loving father. At some time in our life, if we're honest with ourselves, we probably have been each of them. Of course, the hero is the loving father, the one who goes out every day, out on the hillside, every day, waiting, hoping, longing for the son's return. And as we're told, he loved him when he was still a long way away. And our God is like that. Jesus tells us that our God is like that loving father. And when the son returned and had his speech ready, um, I have sinned against you. I no longer deserve to be your son. That loving father wrapped him in the robe and put a ring on him, restored him to his dignity and celebrated. And that's what happens when we turn back to God. When we come to him, he rejoices. So this gospel is an invitation for us in this season of Lent on this Laetari Sunday, Rejoicing Sunday, to come and experience the joy of God's forgiveness. Pope Francis says that God never tires of forgiving us. We get tired of asking for God's forgiveness, but our God is filled with compassion and mercy. And when we're the farthest from God, when we're in the darkest place, our God is captivated with seeking us out, coming to us to restore that friendship, to forgive us and give us a new beginning. So today on this Laetari Sunday, we find joy in the forgiveness that Christ has won for us. And that is the Lenten gift that brings us new life and brings us to the victory of Easter. We now proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, of heaven and earth, earth of all, all things, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God, we now bring our needs to God in prayer. For the church, the body of Christ, May she always preach the love of God, our Father, who forgives the repentant and sinner. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the most vulnerable in our society, especially the unborn, may they be protected by a great respect for human life and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen away from the faith, may they respond to God's grace and return to the Father as the prodigal son did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your love and care for us. Hear the prayers we ask with faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for all good and the good of all this holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end, acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Is as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Donald, our administrator, and Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty 
and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're grateful to the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception for hosting our TV Mass today and to the Marymount University Chamber Singers for leading us in our praise of God. And on this Laetare Sunday, we do rejoice. We're halfway through Lent, but we also rejoice in God's great love for us and the gift of forgiveness that he has won for us. To experience that joy and that encounter with Christ, the sacrament of reconciliation awaits us. The light is on for us to come and experience what the prodigal son experienced, that embrace of forgiveness and love. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly to help support the TV Mass from the Basilica. Call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. We had almost 20 inches of rain. About 40,000 homes were flooded. Water came in from all directions and it turned our city upside down. From day one, when the Knights were created, it was built on charity, giving back to those in need. You're not giving them a hand out, you're giving them a hand up. That's what charity means to the Knights. We have a, a good number of our Knights out sorting the supplies. You really see just complete strangers banding together to you know, help out a family and get uh, you know, walls torn down, lay the groundwork to where they can rebuild. Charity is something that you can't put a price on. We give back to those that need help. And that's, that's what being a Brother Knight is all about.